Welcome to Euclid Academy. In this session, we're going to answer or to go through the biology of past paper questions. And we just basically going to use this as a revision session. So the first question reads, the boxes on the left contain the names of characteristics of living organisms. The boxes on the right contain the definition of these characteristics. Draw one straight line to link the characteristic with its correct definition. So we have an example as well. So we, they give us a characteristic here and they want us to give the definition not to match with the definition. So this should be straightforward if you already know the definition to these characteristics uh, which have been outlined here. For example, sensitivity you know, is just uh, a response to a stimulus and respiration is a production with energy of energy so if you know this definition to be very straightforward so sensitivity we can we've got a number of them here got nutrition excretion and movement so characteristic sensitivity um chemical reaction in cells that break down no the ability to detect sound and respond to changes in the environment so this definitely makes makes sense so sensitivity can be matched with the ability to detect sound and respond to changes in the environment. Respiration, uh, taking in of, okay, this is an example, uh, a chemical reaction in cells that break down nutrient molecules and release energy. So respiration, anything that has to do with energy, in this case, should be uh, under respiration. So respiration is definitely the release of energy by uh, breaking down nutrient molecules, which is, of course, glucose. And we jump to excretion, which is the removal of toxic metabolic waste from the body. So we want to find that the nation action by organism causing a change of position or place, removal from organisms of toxic materials and substances in excess of requirements. So this is what we're looking for. Movement is a permanent increase in size, a process that make more of the same organ kind of organism. An action by an organism causing a change of position definitely movement is a change of position or place reproduction is the process that make more of the same kind growth it is a permanent increase in size so if you didn't know any of these definitions so this is what they mean uh, growth is a permanent increase in size so you do well to remember these definitions so this jumps to the second question which says uh, figure 2.1 shows three mammals we've got the gazelle a giraffe and a leopard so question says for each mammal choose one adaptive feature in visible uh, in feature visible in figure 2.1 and outline how it helps the mammals to survive in its environment. Choose a different feature for each mammal. Write your answers in table 2.1. So we've got the name of the mammal, the adaptive feature that we have chosen or we've uh, identified, how that feature helps the mammal to survive in its environment. So if we can look at this uh, diagram again for these three animals we can see uh, some certain features so what can you see for for the little part here you can see that uh, definitely this distinctive feature the 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 teeth long teeth we've got uh, the sports long tail for the gazelle we've got the horns uh, long legs and then the ears are kind of wide and then we've got giraffe distinctive feature of course it's a long neck long legs and um, sports even the fur so these are the things we can uh, we can mention and then we have to mention why are these things so important to these animals and how do they help them to survive or why are the these features so important for their survival Okay, so we're gonna uh, start with the gazelle. So with the gazelle, well, why is it, uh, what are the features that we can look at? So we talked about uh, the long legs, the large ears, and the horns. So how are these so important? So these are important. Um, they help the animal to survive or the mammal 
uh, let's start with the long legs. So the long legs, they help it to escape predators. And then the large ears can help to warn of dangers or any other predators which are coming. So they help to warn the, the mammal. And then the horns can be used for defense. That is how they, uh, they help the animal or the mammal to survive. Let's talk about the giraffe. So for the giraffe, uh, equally we've got long legs and the neck of course is long and that has got a pattern on the fur. So how does this help? The long legs help for, uh, for it to escape predators and the long neck, it helps to reach leaves in high places or far places or at the top of the tree or the top of trees. Then the fur pattern helps to camouflage or to hide away from uh, predators or or any other animals that would want to uh, that will pose a threat to them. And for the leopard, we talked about the long tail it has got pointed teeth and large claws. So how does this help? Uh, the long tail helps for you to maintain balance. And then the pointed teeth, it, it is what, uh, this is what it uses to tear off or to eat uh, prey. Then for the large claw, crows, that is to disable prey. So these are the adoptive features and how they help the mammal to survive. Let's jump to the next question. Define the term enzyme. And then we've got uh, the B part says shows the diagram uh, of a human alimentary canal so associated or and associated organs. So we'll come to this later. So first of all, let's define an enzyme. So an enzyme is a biological catalyst, uh, which is protein by nature. And the process, uh, the the reason for its existence is to speed up uh, the rates of chemical reactions. So that. Two important features of an enzyme is that it's, 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 uh, it's a catalyst and it's protein by nature. So we can draft out the definition as a biological catalyst that alters the rate of a chemical reaction uh, without itself being permanently changed and it is protein by nature. So that is an enzyme. So without wasting much time, we can jump to the next one. Uh, we have this diagram and most of you are familiar with it. This uh, for uh, the digestion system or digestive system. So this shows a diagram of part of the human alimentary canal in associated organs. Name the structures labeled A, B, C, and D. So this should be fairly easy. So structure A, the one which is here, uh, should be, this should be the liver. And then structure B, of course, should be the stomach and structure C should be the small intestine and the last one definitely becomes the large intestine so these are the parts seen I'm pretty much sure most of us are familiar with these parts and then we jump to the next part this is the next question it says uh, figure 3.2 also shows a diagram of part of the human alimentary canal in associated organs okay it's just a different diagram from the uh, previous one. So on this figure 3.2, draw label lines with letters to show E where hydrochloric acid is made, and F where bile is made, and G where uh, amylase is made, and H where ejection occurs. So let's start with E where hydrochloric acid is made. So hydrochloric acid is made in the walls of the stomach. So that will be an E, which is the stomach. And then bile is made in the, um, we have in the, the liver. And now we remain with, uh, so bile is the liver, which is F. G is uh, the pancreas which is that one there. And then we have got H where ejection occurs. So ejection occurs the, the expelling of undigested food or undigested materials. So that is from the uh, anus. So from the anus there, that is H. So F and 
So that is how we'll label this. So let's jump to the next. So digested food is absorbed in the small intestine. So that is where digested food is absorbed. And digestion of carbohydrates produces glucose. Describe the absorption of glucose. So how is glucose absorbed into the bloodstreams? Uh, in the, into the bloodstream. So we know that glucose uh, digestion of food happens in the small intestine. So what helps for uh, the digestion to occur in the small intestine is the presence of the veil. So absorption happens in the uh, just the presence of the veil in the small intestines, and they help for uh, the absorption of materials from the small intestines into the bloodstreams. So how does this uh, happen with uh, glucose? So we have uh, two processes. We have diffusion and active transport. These are the two processes which can be used goes into the bloodstream. And diffusion is a passive process, meaning does not require uh, energy. And then active transport is, uh, is an active process from the word active transport, meaning it requires energy. So the veil in the small intestine is going to help to absorb the glucose molecules since these glucose molecules are very small and they'll be absorbed into the bloodstream by the two processes that we've mentioned that is diffusion or an active transport. So the villi has also small structures called the microvilli. These enable the, the this structure, the villi, to provide a large surface area for the absorption of glucose molecules which of course we mentioned they are very small so that is how glucose molecules get into the bloodstream or into the blood capillaries and we can jump to the next question this question is about sexual reproduction in humans choose words from the list to complete the sentences below words may be used once more than once or not at all so we've got the cervix exhale embryo, gamete, ovary, testis, uterus, prostate gland, vagina, scrotum, and zygote. So we just have to pick these words to fill in the blanks. Sperm are produced in the dash of the male. So to be straightforward, sperms are produced in the testis of the male. Then a sperm is produced by meiosis and is an example of a cell called a so this should be a gamete so gametes are sex cells um so that should be a gamete during sexual intercourse sperm might release into the vagina or the female at fertilization a spell sperm fuses with the egg cell to form a zygote that is a fertilization which travels to the uter uterus uterus where it develops into an embryo okay so i think this is a very good summary of uh, fertilization and what happens prior to it and uh, in after fertilization so this is how we can fill in these blanks so next we can talk about the big question at the end of pregnancy a woman goes into labor and the baby is born Outline the stages involved in labor and birth. Okay, so first of all, we have the the um, the, the rupture of the amniotic sac where the amniotic fluid comes out, and then we have got the uterus, which uh, the walls of the uterus uh, starts to contract, and then we start to push the uh, the the baby down or out of the womb or the uterus and then um, this happens because the uterus is actually contracting and then the baby gets expelled through the birth canal course uh, uh, simplified so we can put it like uh, the release of the amniotic fluid by rupturing of the amniotic sac then the uh, the cervix dilates and the uterus walls start to contract so the mother has to help by contracting other muscles or by pushing so pushing out the baby through the uh, birth canal or the vagina and after that when the baby is out the umbilical cord is tied and cut 
and normally um, the head is the one which comes out first so that is it on this session we'll talk about the other questions in the next video so we'll see you in the next video and thanks for watching